Before we start, I want to show you a comment from the official Microsoft blog post. What I long desired is finally available. A way to tell someone to just host a bunch of orchestrated containers for me without me caring about the underlying infrastructure. He, Kai Walter, a leading architect from the size group, describes Azure Container Apps. 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 In this video, you will learn what he means by that. What makes Container Apps so special compared to the other container services in Azure? And most importantly, why you should care. I don't care anymore. Let's start with a broad overview and go through some of its amazing features before I will tell you about my absolute favorite feature in Azure Container Apps. You will also learn about some of the challenges that come with Azure Container Apps at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up or even subscribe to the channel. Azure Container Apps was first introduced at Microsoft Ignite in 2021. It's a serverless container platform. It means you don't have to care about the underlying infrastructure. I don't care anymore. Azure Container Apps is number five of all container services in Azure after App Services, Container Service, Container Instances, and Functions. And yes, Functions, if you put them in a container, of course. There have been significant developments in the cloud native ecosystem. Developments in storage, networking, service mesh observability, security have pushed the envelope. Those developments are helping Kubernetes and the cloud native stack to become truly enterprise ready. But on the flip side, those developments are also adding enormous complexity. While the Kubernetes architecture and APIs are standardized and mature, the developer experience is still considered as not so good by many. Microsoft positions, therefore, its latest container service as a platform as a service layer. So isn't AKS already a PaaS service? I would say that somehow, somewhere in between PaaS and IIS, that means infrastructure as a service. So it's not really infrastructure because you get a lot of stuff, you get Kubernetes already. So it's somehow in between. Maybe you can say it's a container infrastructure platform as a service. Hmm, let's move on. And gives us an app-centric approach that empowers us to focus on the business logic of our apps and not on managing cloud infrastructure. But what do we mean with an app-centric approach. Azure Container Apps is built on the foundation of Dapper and Kada. Let's have a quick look at Dapper. The Dapper integration of Azure Container Apps offers us an optional set of APIs that simplify the authoring of our apps and microservices. It exposes a pluggable model to easily swap in and swap out services such as storage, caching, messaging, and database without the need to change our code. For example, apps can communicate securely over mutual TLS through Depper service invocation or messages using Depper's public subscribe API. And there's more to it. Depper enabled apps also provide distributed tracing, which can be integrated with application insights. That makes it possible to follow the course of a request or transactions through an application. Then I mentioned CADA. CADA stands for Kubernetes Based Event Driven Autoscaler and lets us scale in and scale out apps based on external factors, such as the number of messages in a queue or custom metrics that comes through Prometheus. Azure Container Apps can process events from a large list of Kada supported event sources and scale independently based on custom insights. The goal of Kada is to provide a scale to zero infrastructure and optimize resource utilization, which reduces costs. In a nutshell, we can leverage Dapper to encapsulate best practices for microservices and use Kada to achieve event-driven scaling, and this without managing extra complexity 
or even Kubernetes operators. We will get into this in a moment when we talk about the challenges with Azure Container Apps. Let's also briefly talk about some other cool features in Azure Container Apps before I get to my absolute favorite feature. One is long running always on background services. For example, 24-7, 365, we process events from, let's say, a storage queue. I'll add a link in the description that talks about deploying background services to Azure Container Apps. However, those background services usually don't have public endpoints. But for those container apps that do need public endpoints, you can enable ingress and still secure your Azure Container App within a VNet or by using managed identities to access other Azure Active Directory protected resources. And of course, you can bring your own and very personal custom domain and certificate for your Azure Container App. And now, here comes my absolute favorite feature. I think it's a really, really nice feature that Azure Container App has built in by default using Dapper. Version testing, yes. You can manage different versions of your Azure container apps and distribute incoming requests between those different versions and test your latest changes with only a few live users. That makes risky deployments hopefully a thing of the past. I would love to hear what you think. What's your favorite feature of Azure container apps? Let me know below in the comments. You might ask yourself now, what are the reasons for not jumping on the Azure Container Apps train immediately and decommission other container services you might use? Here are some reasons that speaks against Azure Container Apps. Some might argue that we are getting locked into the way Microsoft Azure built the service by being forced to use technologies such as Dapper for Service Mesh, Kada for scaling, Envoy for ingress, and Log Analytics for monitoring. Furthermore, deployments are performed using Azure tools, so you might not bring in your Helm charts. But if you accept these terms, Azure Container Apps might be a good choice for you. Just remember, unlike AKS, you don't have the full cluster in your subscription, so you're not fully in control anymore. This might be best noticeable for those that need access to the underlying Kubernetes API. Another restriction is that Azure Container Apps execute app code package in Linux-based containers only. Sorry for all of you building Windows-based containers. As Kyle Walter put it, Azure Container Apps is just hosting a bunch of orchestrated containers without caring about the underlying infrastructure. That's why I think Azure Container Apps is a great service for small environments that cannot afford to have a dedicated team and maintain AKS. If you want to try out Azure Container Apps today, follow the link in the description below, which leads you to a Microsoft tutorial. Auf Wiedersehen, goodbye, and see you next time. If you'd like the content, please consider giving it a thumbs up.